Good morning, Dr. Robin McKay here. Welcome to your weekly weather report. If you are new to me, to the Actualization Zone on Facebook, welcome. I'm your host. And if you've been here for a while, be sure to say hello. Be sure to say hello either way, because I love to say hello back to you in the comments. And this week, we're doing our weather report from San Diego. I'm in a at a makeshift studio in the place that we've been staying for the last couple of weeks. So next week, you'll see me back in my home office. But for today, we are here and it's the last week in July, July 25th. And this is your weekly weather report. I don't report on thunder, lightning, rain showers. I report on the energetic frequencies that are coming through this week that we, I believe we can harness with our decisions. And I always use a deck of cards to help us uh, guide this conversation. So today I am using a deck of cards from the wonderful Rebecca Campbell. I'm using the Starseed Oracle, but before we get started with that, I have a special announcement that I wanna make that I'm so excited about. Starting on August 1st, I am hosting a 30 day actualization accelerator. For those of you who are spiritual entrepreneurs, leaders, and CEOs who really are craving a focused, very tight container, 30 days long, to hyper-focus on one of your goals. During that time, we're going to be learning the McKay Actualization Method. That's the method I've developed over the last 22 years of my work in this field to actualize a whole bunch of really amazing things in my life and just to actualize a pretty amazing life, actually. Um, So we're going to be covering that as well as choosing one of your heart's desires to prepare the way for, to collapse time and space so that you'll be able to call that in within a very short period of time, often within about 30 days or so. So if that's something that speaks to you, and I know that there are those of you who are listening to this, who have been following me for a while and wanting to step into a container with me, this is your opportunity to do so. So if you'd like to get on the notification list for when that information comes out later today, drop a, just drop a yes, please in the comments and we'll get that sent right over to you a little bit later today. I'm looking forward to this time, August 1st through August 31st, to really anchor in these new momentum frequencies that are coming forward, even starting this week. And to use this to ride the wave into the ne- into the rest of this year and into the next year as well. So really looking forward to spending a solid 30 days with a high frequency group of leaders who are coming together for that, for that actualization accelerator. So if that's on your radar, just drop a comment, just yes, please, in the comments, and we will get that sent over to you later today. Now, without further ado, we have our cards for the week, our energies and weather report for the week. And we're going to start with this one. This is the overriding theme this week, and it has to do with all paths lead to home. So this card, let me show it to you. I always like to see cards when people are talking about them. So here it is, all paths lead to home. And interestingly, there's a labyrinth that's that's presented here in this card. And For those of you who know me, I love labyrinths. I do a lot of labyrinth work with the people who come into Scottsdale to work with me privately. So when we look at all roads lead to home, what the message of this card is this week related to the energetics that are here for us, it really is an opportunity to tune into your intuition, to tune out everything else, all of the other noise around you, and to get really, really tuned into what your inner self is saying, what your your divine and holy spirit has to say about your life, about your work, about what's next for you. Because listen, there are so many competing frequencies in the world, aren't there? Whether it's Netflix or social media or the, the media channels themselves, our friends, our family, everybody's got an opinion. But what I have really come to recognize in my own life and as I've as I've been assisting other people in in actualizing their best lives as well, is that the most refined and the most accurate 
for you is you. The most refined voice, the most accurate voice, the most attuned frequency that you can tune into is going to be your own. So this card this week is really just inviting you to tune into your sacred autonomy, to your inner authority, to turn your gaze inside and to ask simple questions like, what's next? What's the best way to? And to be solution focused rather than problem focused. If you wake up every single morning and you feel crummy and you spin in your head about why am I feeling so bad? Why am I feeling so bad? Why am I feeling so bad? You're going to end up getting just more of the same. So rather than doing that, shifting your perspective into asking different questions, how can I feel better? There is a solution to every problem. There's a solution to every problem. And the energetics this week are just ripe for you to tune into those solutions that come from you. It's not to say that you don't have guides and advisors and support around you at all. So this is not a unilateral experience that you're going to be having this week. It's a collective experience with your guides, with your teachers, with your, with your mentors, with your coaches, but ultimately you're in charge of it. Your intuition is the best way forward. The next one is the Seas of Mintaka. This is a really beautiful crystalline energy. Looks like an ocean there. And I love that. I'm at the ocean right now. So I, I feel that, that energy and that vibe. And this is about seeing potential. Seeing potential and bringing unconsciousness to light. So making what's unconscious, conscious. Seeing the potential, seeing the best of what's possible. And that's one of the things that as we go into the actualization accelerator, you get to experience is being held in your highest potential, holding yourself, holding your vision in your highest potential and making just really subtle but important energetic tweaks to meet up with that heart's desire that you have for yourself. But it starts with seeing the highest potential, seeing what's possible. I don't know if you all can hear this. I've tried to put all the, the sound the sound mutations, or I, that's a, the wrong word to use, but there are a bunch of crows outside right now kicking up a fuss. And I think that's so interesting because crows symbolize magic. So magic's afoot. I think it's a really good sign. So enjoy the crows if you can hear them. If not, I'll enjoy them for you and let you know that they're out there for us signaling that. Magic is afoot. So let's see the potential this week, week in yourself, most importantly in yourself, because here's the thing is that when you are a spiritual CEO, an entrepreneur, a leader, often we have the capability of seeing the best in other people, but we don't always pay attention to looking for the best in ourselves. So that, in fact, is the challenge this week. See the best in yourself. See the best of what's possible and start leaning into that rather than focusing on your flaws or your foibles or your mistakes, your failures. See the best in yourself and see how that shifts your relationship to what's next for you. This next one is Star Family. And Star Family, isn't that a beautiful card? The Star Family the message here this week is that you're part of a team. You're not meant to be walking this road alone, especially during this awakening process, especially during the actualization process. The solo traveler is a very 3D, isolated, egoic character that we have in this, in this matrix that we're living in. But when you are awake, and when you are aware of yourself as a divine and eternal being, when you're aware of the world as something different than what it's presented as, something different than what we see in the 3D, you can recognize that you're a part of a team of souls. You're part of a soul family. And when you start connecting eye to eye and heart to heart with other people, like us here in the actualization zone, you start seeing you're part of a bigger family. I'm not isolated. I am here and I'm here as part of a team of people, a team of beings who have come here 
to shift consciousness, to bring in what's next in this world, to create something new, to innovate in ways that are useful and unique. Isn't that good to know? You're not alone. You're not alone. But here's the thing is that when you're part of a soul family, if you're feeling isolated, it's actually up to you to start to make the decision to start connecting in. Other beings, other people can't do that for you. That's an inside decision. So if you're feeling isolated, if you're wondering where my community is, where is my soul family, you make the decision to start finding them. You make the decision to start calling them in. Other people can't do that for you. They don't want to, we're not actually able to affect your free will, your sacred autonomy. So make the decision, call in your soul family. Call in your soul family, start looking for them and you'll see them, you will see them. The last one, here's the last energy that's influencing us this week. And this is another portal. We've had a lot of portals coming through, but this is another one. This one is the card for being called activating your soul gifts and trainings and the big message here this week for you for me for all of us listening is it's time to step up it's time to come out of holiday mode as much as i regret having to leave this wonderful beach that i'm on right now and go back home to the desert although i have a really great life in the desert too it is it's time to step up and it's time to come off of R and R mode. It's time to come off of vacation mode and really get back into the game. Again, nobody can do that for you. You have to make the decision to do that yourself. And when you do, you can also make the decision to step into and start integrating all of your gifts, all of your intuitive gifts, all of your gifts of being able to read energy, to read the room, to transform your own thinking, to transform the thinking of other people, to transform your life. It starts with you. It starts with you. And the decision to do so is the most important thing this week. So that's our reading for the week. It's all about leaning into leadership, leaning into what's next, and harnessing these energies. You know what I say is that take what serves and lead the, leave the rest. But when you listen to a session like this and you think that sounds really cool or that really lands for me, or that really resonates with me, that's step one. Step two is anchor it in. Make the decision to harness these energies this week. And you do that by just asking simple questions like, how can I? What's the best way to anchor these energies? What's the best way to start identifying and connecting with my soul family? Maybe it's to join the actualization accelerator. Maybe it's to make some posts in the actualization zone on Facebook. And by the way, if you're not a member of the actualization zone yet on Facebook, head on over there and just type actualization zone into the search bar. It'll come right up and you can join us over there as well. That's the place to be. If you're an intuitive and intelligent leader who's ready to create a new world for yourself and for other people. And by the way, a lot of spiritual Entrepreneurs, leaders, and CEOs also have adult ADHD or think they do. And that's one of the things that I'm starting to focus more on now and in the future is really providing specific support for those of us who do have ADHD and we also are leaders. In fact, that's really part of the reason I want to teach the actualization method I've developed is because. I have ADHD myself and these methods work for me. I've noticed that a lot of the people who I look up to, who I'm colleagues with, who are doing really, really well in business, are their brains are pretty neurotypical. They don't have ADHD. They don't have the anxiety and the, the social anxiety and sometimes the depression that comes along with ADHD. And so sometimes their methods aren't the most effective way to create what somebody with ADHD wants to create and can see in our mind's eyes. So the actualization methods that I'm teaching starting next week in the accelerator, these are the methods that I know work for me and for my clients because we've 
created a lot of really remarkable things over the years and they can work for you too, especially if you've got the ADHD. So I'm going to zip it for now. I'm going to wish you the best week. I'm going to wish you the best rest of the year and I will see you in the actualization zone.